Alright, so I'm going to start off with the base color and this step is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to use the pen tool to make my selection. And so I'm sure you don't want to watch me making the selection all day, so I'll just speed this up. And so once I've made my base selection, I'll pick the base color and it's going to be this peachy orangey color. And so once we've got the base color sorted out, we can move on to adding in the shadows, which is this darker color. It's kind of like a darkish brown red. So what I'm doing now is I'm locking the transparency of the base layer, and this is going to allow me to just color in this section so it's not gonna color outside of it. This will allow me to color in the area without it going outside of the original coloring. And so the way that I'm coloring this in is kind of like cell shading to begin with, sort of like how you would see in anime. I'm pretending that the light source is sort of coming from this general direction. I usually tend to use this kind of light setting because it's very natural. It's the sort of light setting that you get a lot in nature because obviously the sun is going to be shining down from above you and I usually like to have it more to one side than the other because if you just have it directly above it's kind of, uh, it looks artificial. And so you don't have to worry about this being super clean or pretty to begin with. It's just about laying in those rough shadows. And so yeah, you just see me here trying to figure out where to place them. And I'm kind of winging it, which which isn't always the best idea, but I think I've got a good idea of what I want this to look like. So yeah, use reference if you need to, people. And so when I'm coloring, I'm essentially breaking up the hair into fairly large chunks so later on I can go in and uh, I can refine it a bit and I can break them up into smaller hair strands. So in the beginning don't try and go too much into detail just keep it fairly simple to begin with. Alright so I've created a new layer and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a layer mask and I do that by pressing down alt on the keyboard and just clicking in between this new layer and the layer below it. So this is kind of similar to the locking transparency, but it allows me to work on a layer above. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some rendering and I'm going to use this sample brush, which I got from an artist called Zin Chin. I'll put a link in the description to where I downloaded it. So I'm still just working with the two main colors which I put down and what I'm doing is I'm pressing Alt to get the color picker tool to go back and forth between the light uh, color and the dark color and I'm sort of just pressing lightly and I'm softening up some of the edges and I'm introducing new hair strands and details. So it's starting to look a little bit more like hair now and we can now introduce uh, the next color which is going to be our ambient occlusion color and ambient occlusion is going to be the darkest parts of the hair is the darkest shadows where there's the least light amount of light getting in and you'll see once we start adding in a bit of this it starts to look a lot more um, three-dimensional Now I'm going to do something that will instantly make this hair look way better. And first I'm just going to uh, select the hair layer. 
and then I'm going to go into curves and I'm going to play around with the curves a bit. And so this really just makes the colors pop a lot more. And so once we've done that, we can move on to adding in some hair strands. And this part's pretty straightforward. I'll just start adding in some more brush strokes, just especially on the outside perimeters of the hair, because at the moment it looks a little bit too solid. It doesn't look quite like hair is supposed to. So adding in some extra hair strands really takes it that next level of believability. So I've merged all of the layers together now and I'm using the dodge tool to just add a little bit more saturation to the hair. And I have uh, the dodge tool set to highlights. And then I use another tool called the burn tool and I have that set to shadows and I use that to darken parts of the hair and it, that also adds a little bit more saturation. So now on a new layer above the hair layer, I'm going to add in the ambient light, which is going to be this blue color. So the blue from the ambient light is kind of like simulating what uh, would happen in real life where if you're outside you'd get blue from the sky and a bit of that would a bit of that color would mix with the hair. And so I put a bit more in the shadow areas and this may not necessarily be the most realistic depiction of ambient light but I find adding in that little bit of blue really makes the hair a lot more interesting than if it's all shades of red and orange. And so I'm just pressing quite lightly with the brush. Uh, I'm not pressing too hard, otherwise it would be too blue and then it'll just look strange. And yeah, that blue mixes with the base color and you get this nice kind of cool tone. And so once we're done with our ambient light, now we can move on to highlights. And I'm just gonna be using this creamy color. So now I'm going to press Ctrl Alt E on the keyboard and this is going to merge all the layers together. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply a, a blur effect to this layer just to soften it. And then I'm also going to go to levels and play around with the levels a bit just to up the contrast. Next, I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer to about 17%. This gives the hair a bit of a softer look. And so now I continue to soften up the hair a little bit more. I start adding in a bit of the white from the background just on the, the edges of the hair, just to make it seem more like it's actually in that environment. I just soften the hair up a little bit more because I feel it's still a little bit too sharp. And I'm just doing this all with the soft round paintbrush. I'm just picking up colors that have already been put down into the hair and I'm just mixing them around. What I find a lot when I'm doing hair is it's a lot of trial and error. Often I'll go back over things and redo them because it's just, there's so many different ways you can paint hair. There's so many different ways that the hair can flow and if you don't do it right, it can look a little bit too rigid. The most important thing to be aiming for when doing hair, I think, uh, or at least one of the most important things is for the hair to flow. It doesn't matter how much you render and how much detail you put in, if your hair doesn't have much of a flow to it, it'll look kind of uh, gross. <laughs> and so here I'm just uh, showing a little bit of a before and after example. 
just to demonstrate how much of a difference just a little bit of a paint over can make. And so we're in the final stretch of the painting and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to use this orange color and I'm going to set the layer mode to overlay. And I'm going to do this just to add a little bit of extra vibrancy and saturation to the hair. Next, I'm going to create a new layer above that one and set the layer mode to linear dodge. And so this just makes the hair look very pretty. Just be sure not to overdo it because it can be very tempting just to go crazy with it. And that's the end of the video. If you learned something, be sure to like the video. And if you want to see some more from me, subscribe to the channel. Bye.